Um, uh, Mike, what is your first memory of Connor? Uh, he was in a dorm room in UNL in Lincoln. I'm, that's my first memory. He was st staying upstairs with Rob Nanzel and Ted Stevens, who I had just met that year. Uh, he, was, he had his acoustic guitar and he was going to play on campus. I thought it was weird that he, cause you were staying with them. I, I thought it was a little weird. Well, cause I was like 13. Yeah. He's like, I thought 13 <laughs> or 14 year old boy in this college dorm room that he was sleeping there with these two guys that I just met. And I'm like, this feels potentially illegal. I don't know, but they all seem cool. He's actually got good songs. What the fuck? That kind of thing. What so, were you doing there, Connor? Um, they were just my friends. I mean, it sound, it does sound crazy, but um, we were already friends and like uh, Ted. So Ted Stevens, who now plays in cursive, but him and, and Mike here used to be in a band called Lullaby for the Working Class. But he was the first guy that came over when I was like 13. He like heard some of my songs and recorded me on his four track. And that became like my first album, which was a cassette tape. But um, so I just I just had this group of older friends that um, all played in bands and I just like tagged along. Now, while why my like mother let me go to um, <laughs> For real. like like Lincoln, which is an hour away, and then stay in a dorm room. Um, she trusted you, you know. She, I think I mean she trusted me, but I think more than anything, she <laughs> she trusted those guys. But yeah. she also let me go on tour when I was fifteen, and these guys, you know, these guys are all like four or five years older than me so we like got in a van and went on tour i'm 15 they're like 20. i remember her like making rob like sign a thing or like she signed a thing for rob that like if something happened to me he could like take me to the hospital and like prove that all oh, right yeah that makes sense to, like yeah. do surgery guardian some, some kind of something like that yeah why did she trust them i mean i she knew them really well like my 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 parents house was always like that house that like people hung out at and like we had a band practice there and I mean she knew them all like really well and I think you know she yeah she just yeah she's the question sounds there. accusational like why would he trust her <laughs> like well no, I, I, I mean no it well, does I, it, it does seem wild but I guess if you knew these guys and you knew like my mom it would make more sense probably yeah. that makes sense uh yeah. Connor what's your first memory of Nate of Nate yeah. Um, I saw him play also in Lincoln because Nate grew up in Lincoln. I grew up in Omaha, but um, I saw um, him play in a band at, uh, what was the little, what was that cafe place called? Was it Yaya's? Yeah. No, the one oh, across. No, not yet. What's it called? The, pe what, the pizza place or? No, not the pizza Coffee place. Coffee shop, mudslides. It was like called something cafe, like shock or not, not shock. Oh. No. So, but um was it what kind of music was it it was you were playing trumpet it was um it what was like uh, was it kid was it kid cork star kid cork star yeah kid cork star got it with so i think we had either we played a sh either we played the show also okay. or okay. i was just there i don't i can't remember but i saw nate and i was like man god that guy's handsome and <laughs> he's playing trumpet and that's so it seemed very exotic to see someone like playing trumpet and like a rock was like, band. I was in high school at, the time. at yeah. the time. He was in high school. I was, you know, I'm a couple years younger than him, but yeah, it was, uh, I was just like, I was like, Oh, he's that, there he is. You know? Who was in kid quark star. So, well, the other, one of the other main guys was James Valentine. That's what I thought. Yeah. From five fame. So five and I, fame. yeah. So he, he and I grew up together and we had a, um, a little what started as a jazz group we would play standards tunes you know um and then we, we started writing our own music by the time we were in like 11th grade so and it became kind of a little more fusion oriented a little more like i don't know it's hard, hard to explain but um <laughs> we started writing our own material we became kid quark star we started as the jazz thugs Oh. We playing jazz like, thugs yeah yeah so and that's, that's so what's that's up james <laughs> from rune five myself a couple other folks from the university do you still have cds of them of I, that group i do it was our like th that was our yeah the, yes absolutely that was very much um our our project that we focused on 
uh, primarily in high school. And we had a we had a Thursday night gig at a pizza place that Mike's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where I thought you saw him because we'd go there. Yeah, that was my first kind of experience writing. We would get horn sections. That was my first experience um, writing charts for horn sections and things like that. Um, you know, Lincoln. It is what it is, but I will say the university scene had kind of a cool little music scene going on. That's when I met Mike. He was Did we ever record Could Quarkstar in the Basement? With your brother, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. And so same we, with- Our first, yeah, actually our first, our second recording was made in Mike's basement um, with his brother, I think, engineering some of it. Oh, you probably filled in some of it for some of the engineering, but- um, then, no, that's when I was like learning how to engineer. I just watched them and 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 you and yeah. James Valentine. And, yeah. So, anyway, that's so we. But then our we would every once in a while these like special gigs would come up, like the ones that Connor's talking about, like you know, opening for a rock band or something like that. And um, you know, we we uh, get very excited about that sort of thing. Um, and then when you three came together, there, there's like, there's always like one person that wants it the most um, to like make a group happen. Um, who was like pushing the group to, to form and pushing it along? Well, it kind of happened gradually. Like uh, the very first, you know, technically Bright Eyes record, which I don't even consider a record, was again, just like me with my four track making terrible like acoustic songs. Um, not terrible. Face. Some some oh, are some, some, pretty some terrible. Are, yeah. And then my and then the second record, letting out the happiness, is like Mike offered to record me, and basically join the band and help me. Like we made all the everything happen, and then we you know basically that's when we started. And then then we made Beavers and Mirrors, and then when we made Lifted, Nate came into the picture, and so that was two thousand two. And I remember at some point on, maybe at the end of that tour, I just assumed that, because Nate talks more now, but at the time he barely said anything. And I was pretty <laughs> convinced that he like didn't even like my music, but he was like really talented and could play everything. And I was like, well, I'm gonna keep him around. You know, I can, like, <laughs> I can pay it. Like he's here to get paid or whatever. He wants to go on tour. Um, and I remember at the end, I think it was at the end of the Lifted tour, I just assumed he was gonna like go back to Chicago where he's living and like play jazz music or do something more interesting. And I, I think we were like sitting on the back of the bus and I was like, I was like, so what are you, you know, what are you gonna do now? I got this other tour, um, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, he got like, it was the first time I was like, he got really sweet and like let his guard down. He's like, my favorite thing to do is to play with you. Like, so I wanna like do the next tour. I wanna keep playing with you. And so that then is, basically he was in the band after that. So yeah. that is so sweet. Cause I, after high school, <laughs> I had moved from Lincoln to Chicago because you know, I was really into jazz and classical music and all that stuff. And you know, I went to music school and I loved being in Chicago very much. It was great. And, um, uh, and I was very much kind of dividing my focus between those, between a lot of different things. But um, one of them was playing with Connor and Mike and uh, so I was very much sort of going in two different directions at once. And there, but there's a lot of overlap there, so it worked. You out made fine. you made the right decision. Let's just Got put it that way. way. We will uh, never know. There's no future in jazz. <laughs> there's no money in jazz. I still I will say I've 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 been fortunate enough to sort of get back into that a little bit more on that track lately because of um, this. I don't know. There's been a lot of great stuff happening in LA lately. So. Um, a bit of a resurgence in the jazz world that has allowed me to uh, get back into it. It's been fun. Well, was, um, you know, was this album a bit of a, a dream of yours? I mean, it sounded like because you, it just sounded like you had free reign, you know, like the production is so big and there's like so much that you put into it. It really sounds like this it, it sounds like I feel like the album that like every producer or instrumentalist wants to play because it's so beautiful and so big. Oh, well, thank well, you. Yeah. I think that since we have like our own studio space and nobody was, we, nobody was expecting a Bright Eyes record. I don't know. I think yeah, we no just one knew, took our time. No, and, yeah, and, no one knew we were making it and we like didn't have a label. So it was kind of like, we spent like two years making it and, 
could kind of do whatever we want or take as long as we wanted, basically do whatever we wanted. So it's a lot of layers to it, a lot of steps in the so and, and who was like, you know, how did you decide to make it so big? What, like, which one of you was involved in the, like, you know, the expansion of the sound? Like all three of us. Yeah, I think that's something we collectively kind of have an interest in and, and um, you know, it's definitely a group effort as far as that stuff is concerned. Um, yeah. Connor, you've written, go, go ahead, Mike. Oh, go. no, I was like, it, it's kind of a boring answer, but it's the truth. It's like uh, the dynamic, the work kind of dynamic between the three of us is very collaborative and, and you know, so go ahead. You're gonna ask Connor a question. I don't want to <laughs> bore your fucking. Your, I sorry, I cuss your listeners. It's all go good. Uh, with tape, so I will be able to bleep them, and they'll That's sound good. like. Is this rock and video? Roll. Do, do they watch this? Um, it, it'll be a thing where I'll probably ask if we can put it up, and. Oh, okay, then yeah. I won't. I'll leave my shirt on. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's getting hot in here. It's like you know, it, Connor's fucking a hundred degrees. Yeah. Um, Connor, you've written a lot of songs. Have you written a song about Mike or Nate? Um, you know, actually, I wouldn't say an entire song, but there's definitely lyrics along the way that I wrote. Well, I name check, uh, I name check Michael in what's that song on Lift? Oh, yeah. Some. So Method like, acting. Like, Michael, please keep the tape rolling. Da, 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 da. No. Uh, You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> and then, and then, and then uh, actually, on uh, there's a song on Digital Ash that um, I always, like, I, I kind of always think of, I, like, when I was writing it, I was thinking of Nate, and I always um, uh, still think of him when we, when we sing it, but it's... Um, it's the end of uh, what's that song? Um, uh, I in symmetry. I, I believe in symmetry. Yeah, the one about the up and down the up and down the treble clef. You yep. know that whole zone. Yeah. I was kind of, I was kind of thinking Nate because like, you know, he's the maestro. So appreciate yeah. that. And it's a great ending. It's one of my favorite parts of that record. Is yeah. Hearing the outro to symmetry. It's like a. Mm. And that. And then I also wrote it's first that. day of my li- first day of my life about Mike as well, but uh, yeah. that's a, that's a different story. That's like a longer story. Yeah, we got it. this guy. You can't go there. It's... I little known fact: I actually ghost wrote Lua for Connor. So, um, um, so, uh, um, Connor, I feel like. Um, a lot of people feel like Bright Eyes is like the band that they um, connect their like identity with or like, you know, I see this thing in this band um, and really like connected with their identity. What, um, what was like a band like that for you? Um, ooh. I feel like there's a, there was kind of a lot of them over the years. I, don't, I never had like a favorite band you know, I've had bands I was really into for like a period of time. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I had a favorite like all time, you know, at least at that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. At that age, I'm trying to think. There was what about the band. Doors? I remember you bringing up the Doors once. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was the Doors. <laughs> Never heard you talk yeah. about the Doors. Like, the Doors band. Yeah, where did you? <laughs> I, we, uh, I did an interview with me. me you, me, and Phoebe one time. Oh, and I shit. can't. I can't remember what you I'm said. I'm sorry. About I was course. probably fucking around. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm. I'm actually positive I was fucking around. Um, I'm sorry. I that. remember you had differing. Opi- you said you had differing opinions, but I can't remember whose was which. Oh, we're like, yeah, we fight. Phoebe and I fight about music a lot. I happen to think the Doors are like. I hated them when I was like a teenager. Yeah. But like now when I listen to them, I'm like, oh, it's like the organ and like what they were doing was like, it was interesting. It was cool. Like I, I kind of appreciate them for like what they are, but by no means would I put them in my like top tier favorite band. Right now. 
<laughs> Nate, what do you think? I think he's hiding something. <laughs> I'm, not sure if he, I'm not sure if he's being. I'm hiding. I'm hiding like the tight. The That's tight where you get your pants. poetry. Yeah, yeah, I'm hiding the tight leather pants I'm wearing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can only see the top half of me. Yeah, <laughs> but the bottom half is Jim Morrison. <laughs> it's just skin tight leather, man. It's like it. Um, is that what you meant? What do I think about Connor's love of the Doors? <laughs> no, I just meant what do you think about the Doors with like. Yeah, let's hear like what a you're, I want to. I want to hear this answer too. Um, I mean, you know, pretty like groundbreaking stuff in some sense, um, musically speaking. You know, Ray. Uh, you know, the with uh, Ray Manzarek with the. Uh, you know the first, first, band, and all first that. band. First band to ever have a billboard um, in L.A. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gary, Gary Burden told me that. Our friend Gary Burden, like designed uh a lot of their artwork he passed away a couple of years ago but he was like 84 when he died but he made all the cool california artwork like neil young and jackson brown and joni mitchell and the doors and mama cass and blah 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 but he made some of those classic doors covers which side note but yeah, cool. and some I, Connor Obers, didn't he? I mean, and he made a bunch of my yeah. album, you know, same Monsters thing. of Folk album cover too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like the Doors, you know, I I, <laughs> I feel like something maybe we're all on the same page about is like none of us were maybe really like went through that Doors phase that a no. lot of people did. I think that's something that we have in common. But um, that's what I, bonds us. <laughs> I can I can appreciate like, it sort of from a distance. I yeah. I kind of remember this now. I think I was intentionally trying to piss Phoebe off. <laughs> sure. happening sure yeah. <laughs> um okay so in the last like two minutes here uh i like the election is coming up and uh i i think you know we do want people to our artists to talk about like the importance of voting especially like we are in wisconsin we are in milwaukee milwaukee was decided by like less than 20 i mean wisconsin was decided by less than twenty three thousand votes and fifty thousand people in the city of milwaukee Vote, like didn't vote in like between the two elections and we have the power to change the entire election so it's like yeah. been my fucking calling card out here and so yeah <laughs> i think it would be important to to hear um what your like what your thoughts are on voting in the last two minutes my thoughts are please vote and please vote for biden and harris and if you're gonna vote for trump just stay home. It's totally fine to stay home. Just eat, <laughs> eat some chicken wings and stay home. Take the night off. You got my permission to take the night off. But if you're going to vote for Biden and Harris, get out there. You got no excuse because literally like every element of our democracy is on the line and the basic concept of truth and reality is on the line. And we're letting like a complete charlatan and a megalomaniac and a psychotic person run our country. And if we, if we, uh, if we let him have another term, he'll, he, he, I, I'm not, I'm not being like hyperbolical or anything. I think like, I think he literally could just, could completely destroy this country. Um, that's like my sincerest belief. I'm not, I know I'm like a bleeding heart liberal and I say crazy stuff sometimes, but this is like not a joke this is like the realest thing so I, anyone out there i don't necessarily think you should respect my opinion but this is connor from bright eyes and please vote this maniac out of office before it's too late that's my message <laughs> well Perfect. said yeah. yeah well said <laughs>